Good morning. Good morning. God's been good to us again, blessed us to be able to come to this place and corporately gather to uh, sing praises to his name, gather around the table. But the express purpose needs to be to God. It isn't always that we need to look forward to seeing each other. That's a good thing. We need to always look forward to, to serving and fellowshipping with each other, seeing family and friends that we haven't seen for a while, and that is a good thing. But never forget that our express purpose for corporately gathering together here is to give praise and adoration to God. God has blessed us so much, and we have so much to be thankful for, and we need to always, just always, give praise and adoration to him. Welcome. I'm glad to see you, especially those who may be first-time visitors um, with us. We want you to know whether you're in person for the first time or you're enjoying our live stream through social media, we hope that something has been done today, something sung, something said, something perhaps in the lesson will encourage you along in your faith walk with Christ. And again, to those faithful members who are here every week doing what you can to build up the body of Christ here that worships in Trent, again, I thank God for you, and I'm so happy to be able to fellowship with you again. We sang a song uh, a moment ago, Lord, make me a servant. And I'm going to, I was going to do this at the end, but I want to put this uh, on, on our minds. Um, there was a fire here in Trent, actually right behind me, uh, early this morning. I don't have any specific details. As I get those details, I'll bring them to you. But we need to be in prayer for the family um, whose home uh, caught fire early this morning. It looks to me like the home was completely destroyed. But again, I'm not going to jump to conclusions. Richard's saying yes. Um, but let's remember to pray. It's in times of tragedy, um, especially in a small community like this, that we all just need to come together and do what we can to ease each other's burdens. Let's pray for the family. I don't believe that there was any loss of life, but as I have more details, I'll, I'll give those to you. I'm just saying we need to be prayerful, but we need to also, Trent, be ready be ready to serve. And as I have more information, I'll be happy to get that to you. Let me give you <clears throat> some uh, some information today. Fifth Sunday singing, um, I did send out an email but to those who perhaps didn't get it. It is today at the Long Church of Christ. The singing starts at 5 p.m. It'll go from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then at 6 p.m., promptly, they told me, um, they will serve light refreshments, more like finger foods, and because it was a friend of mine um, that was giving me the information I had on the phone, y'all know you preacher, I, I ain't got no sense. I said, y'all y'all serving finger foods, I'm, I'm late, so y'all not gonna cut off my finger. No, I don't do that alone, I'm sorry, I'll leave that alone. He just kind of laughed, he knew me. Um, but this afternoon, five o'clock, at the Lawn Church of Christ, my GPS and I will have to figure out how to get there, but I'm sure we'll make it, I'm, I'm sure we'll make it. Encouraging as many people as you can, uh, as can to attend this this uh, fifth Sunday singing. N number one is right to fellowship with other congregations and let's encourage each other in the body of Christ. Secondly, um, and, and I have an ulterior motive. I'd like for us, if at all possible, to host the next one in uh, in January, the fifth Sunday. And so, if we're going to expect people to come to Trent, then we need to show ourselves friendly and go to. The, the, the location there. So in that regard, there will not be an online devotional tonight. Ernest, that's what I was trying to get at, since we'll be at the Fifth Sunday singing, and then their fellowship will start at six, and tonight, uh, and tonight only, I will not do an online devotional. I will pick that, um, we'll do a live stream on Wednesday from our singing service that we normally have here in person. So let's um, do what we can to support the, uh, the fifth Sunday singing, which will take place um, this afternoon at the Lawn Church of Christ. Uh, November 17th through the 19th will be our fall um, gospel meeting. Uh, Brother Freddie Anderson, I just love saying that. Freddie, I just, I just love saying that. Um, a great, great name. He'll be here to uh, speak. And the theme of the meeting, All Roads Lead Somewhere, Trent, this is our gospel meeting. I realize we haven't had one in, in quite some time, 
There are some flyers and there are some cards in the back. I will bring extra if I need to. Please take those. Talk this meeting up. I talked to Brother Anderson again uh, a few days ago, and to say that he is excited is an understatement. Um, he is more than willing to come, but we have to make sure that we do our due diligence in, in advertising the meeting and talking the meeting up. I've been putting the word out uh, among the churches in the area, especially the last uh, minister to minister meeting that we had with the churches of Christ in the area, but not just the churches of Christ. I've gotten wind of a couple of other uh, congregations in this area that are wanting to come and support the meeting at what as well seven o'clock will start every night there will be a meal on uh wednesday that meal will be at 6 p.m i'm encouraging as many people as possible to rsvp mandy i know i, I understand i get it but we're going to encourage it anyway and what we have we have and when it runs out it runs out but we're going to encourage people to rsvp anyway um friday the 19th Brother Anderson will be speaking, I think it's at 11 o'clock, um, at the school in Trent to the 6th through 12th grade is what I'm told. And this is a message um, that they especially need to hear because in him working in prison ministry for the last 30 plus years with death row inmates, he's been talking to a lot of inmates and they've told him virtually the same story. You know, if I would have made better choices and better decisions, when I was in middle school and perhaps high school, I wouldn't have ended up here. And that has been the launching pad for his entire ministry. So let's get excited. Take some of the cards uh, in the back. Talk up the gospel meeting, which will take place November 17th through the 19th, right here, 7 p.m. Uh, nightly. The meal on Wednesday will be at 6 p.m. Let's finish last Sunday of the month. Um, let's finish the series in 1 John, ex um, experiencing the Father's love. Today, let's talk about confidence and carefulness when it comes to prayer. That's chapter 5, verse 14 through verse 17. Confidence and carefulness when it comes to prayer. Chapter 5 is really John's concluding remarks on really talking about what I'm, I'm wrapping up as far as the experience or experiencing the Father's love. Here's his concluding affirmations. Verse 13 starts like this. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Verse 14 is a familiar verse that I'm sure you know. The Bible says, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God. Or the King James Version says, in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Verse 15, and if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the blessing to come before you in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for loving us a lot of times, Lord, all the time, loving us better than we love ourselves. Father, we pray now that as we approach your word, we pray that we'll have an open heart and open spirit to receive with meekness your engrafted word which is able, Lord, to save our souls. We pray, Father, for the family that was involved in the fire, the early hours of the morning. We pray a special blessing for them, and we pray for our community, Lord, as we now rally together to help, not only because you've commanded it, but because it's the right thing to do. Help us to, to always love each other and build each other up in your most high and holy faith. We pray for the message, Father, that it find a resting place on our hearts that we can not just leave your word here in this physical building, but we can take it with us every day of our lives and so that others will see Christ glorified and magnified in our lives. Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. We thank you and we love you for this and all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. John has a unique ability in 1 John 
because it is such a short letter, some would call it a book, some would call it maybe a letter, John has a unique ability, especially here in chapter 5, of really helping us get the right perspective when it comes to prayer. And that's important because a lot of times the way you think you see something may not necessarily be the way that thing really is or your eyes may need to get adjusted so that you can see things right. The first time that my eye doctor told me I would be going into bifocals, he and I had words and I can't repeat those words. It, it makes, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He told me when I put these bifocals on that I'm gonna to have to give my eyes a chance to adjust because things may not be exactly what they seem. And you know your preacher well enough. I say, ah, he don't know what he's talking about. I got this, ain't no problem. Well, coming out of his office is kind of a slope that my eyes hadn't adjusted to and I overcorrect. What y'all laughing at? Y'all stop laughing. <laughs> and I overcorrected. And it was like, oh my goodness, I almost fell in it. Wasn't even a step there. My eyes had to get adjusted. <laughs> they tell me going from bifocals to trifocals ain't some better. So let's hope I don't find let's hope I don't find that out. But but John has a unique way. And chapter five is kind of a way of bringing everything into focus that he's been saying about how to experience the love of the Father especially when it comes to prayer. He helps us to kind of see things the right way because I think sometimes we don't see prayer the way that we should. Prayer was never intended to be viewed as a parachute that we open in cases of emergency. Never was. Or prayer was never designed to be a laundry list that when we've tried everything else, we go to prayer and the last resort, well, we can pray. No. Prayer always was intended to be the first thing. Neither was prayer um, praying designed um, to be looking like a criminal that's cringing before an unmerciful judge. Well, you know, we can pray, but we don't know if God's going to hear it. No, for the Christian, for the believer, y'all, it's never been about that when it comes to our prayer life. Prayer is more like, and I love this one, a dependent child conversing with a loving father, expressing his adoration and admiration and his gratefulness and explaining his present need for help himself, for his family, and for his friends. We don't need to lack confidence when it comes to our ability to pray to our creator. Why? Because God loves us so much and if we're in a right state with him when it comes to our worship and our connection, then when it comes to God, we have nothing that we should be afraid of. Simply put, prayer is a continual communication between us as the needy creature and God who is our loving creator and our heavenly father. So I want you to hear Paul's take Continuing what John said in Ephesians chapter 3, listen, listen to how Paul really talks about prayer. And I want you to notice here, Paul isn't praying like some of us pray. We ask for everything and we want the sun, the moon, and the star, stars. Paul isn't doing that. Listen and get the right perspective when it comes to prayer. Paul says in Ephesians 3, for this reason I bow my knee to the Father. I've got that memorized from King James, even though it's, it's, it's written NIV. From whom every family in heaven and in earth derives its name. Listen to Paul's prayer. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being. Notice he's not praying for himself. He's praying on behalf of other people. Nothing wrong with praying for yourself, but I think a lot of times we get too selfish when it comes to our prayer. I think a lot of times our responsibility with God and our thankfulness with God and our appreciation to God would go a long way if it was less of me and more of He. Verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray 
that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how deep is the love of Christ. Did you hear that? He wasn't treating prayer like a shopping list at Walmart. Lord, I need this, and Lord, bless me with this, and Lord, give me this. He was saying, Lord, I just want to know you. I just want to get closer to you. I just want to believe in you, Lord. I just want the riches of your blessings and glory. How good it would be and how memorable if we would get this lesson. Instead of treating God like a, a Walmart or a laundry list, Lord, we, I bow before you, and I acknowledge you as my creator. And Lord, I'm asking, I love the song Harry sang, Lord, just make me a servant. Make me a servant just like you. How did Christ serve? He served to the point of giving his life as a ransom for us all. So it behooves us to take a minute and to look at the prayer life of Jesus. And as I was studying uh, for this, it occurred to me, wait a minute, we look at the prayer life of Jesus Jesus was not only the Son of God, Jesus was God. So for the first time it occurred to me, wait a minute, did Jesus really need to pray? And I got to thinking, I got to meditating on that, I got to going to scripture and searching that. And this is what this is what I came, this is what I came up with. Now why is this important? Because if we're gonna look at having confidence in prayer, then we're going to have to imitate Christ not only in our everyday life but especially in our prayer life. Prayer was an integral part of the life of Jesus because of the relationship that he had with the Father and that was the center of his life. In other words, our relationship with God and, and if we're gonna have an, a proper prayer life with God, it can't be every once in a while. It can't be haphazard. It can't be when, when I'm just in trouble. It can't be when I just need something. It has to be a normal, everyday extension of my relationship with the Father in my life. So, why did Jesus pray? I mean, he was the Son of God. He was God. So he technically didn't need to pray. No, that's not exactly true. I, I found two reasons. There were really three, but boiling it down to two reasons that Jesus prayed. First, he prayed because he wanted to be and was and is an example to us as believers. Parents, you, 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 you already know this. There are certain things that when I became a parent, I had to change. Even, even though I had children, I wanted to set a better example for my children. I remember this. One thing I had to change was my eating habits. There were certain things that I just flat didn't like, and I wasn't going to eat. And then my wife and I were talking to her, how are you going to encourage your children to eat this, brother? <laughs> if you don't eat this. I said, well, sister, I don't know. <laughs> so I had to change things. Now, again, I'm just telling you about me. I never could stand those little nasty green round peas. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the ones in school that we used to put in the, it's a scoop of school of mashed potatoes, and you put two or three of them peas on there, and you flick it. No, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Stop. No, Wait a minute. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> Your preacher wasn't always a Christian. I'm just saying. <laughs> but I had to at least try them. If I wanted my children, how could I tell my children to try it? If I didn't try, well, I suffered it down, and the girls decided they agreed with me. I tried it, Pop, these things are nasty. I said, well, that's my girl, thank you. <laughs> my son comes along, guess what? Y'all ain't gonna guess. He likes them. Loves them! <laughs> I was like, and so the girls got the point, they straight for his pussy. What am I trying to say here? As a father, there are certain things that we have to do because we love our children. God loves us so much that Christ's relationship with his father and prayer was a natural extension of that love. He prayed because he wanted to be an example for us, his followers, John 17. I'll show you that in a minute. Secondly, and this fits into what we're doing uh, with, with, with the rest of this year, talking about the, the Trinity. 
Second, because of the nature of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God was God the Son, is God the Son, so Jesus had to pray to keep the communication between God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. That's John chapter 17. Listen to it like this. John 17, after he said this, he looked towards heaven and he prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. Listen, Christ is uh, the Son of God, Christ is God, but in the flesh, he prayed just like we need to pray to God. The Father, I've revealed to you, to those who you gave me out of the world, they were yours, you gave them to me, and I have obeyed your word. Now they uh, know you, uh, that everything you have given me comes from you. You see the connection? God is a triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all communicating and one. Look at, look at, look at verse 20. He continues that, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message. I have made you known to them, and I'll continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Do you hear the connection? You hear, you hear how it's, it's an extension of a relationship? Prayer is not a last resort. Prayer always needs to be the first thing that we do. It should be a natural extension of the relationship we have with God the Father. So let me, let me wrap it up like this. And I'm starting to, to make this a lot more practical in my teaching and preaching because it makes sense. It makes sense to me. So what? I'm starting to answer the so what questions when it comes to my life and my responsibility in God. We, we know that as Christians, we should be praying. We know that as Christians, it should be a natural extension of, of our relationship with God. But so what? Here's the so what, I think, when it comes to prayer. And, and John gives us four things in chapter 5 that really we can see and it's tangible for us to hold on to. He says, I write these things to, to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know. There's no guesswork. It should not be any guesswork when it comes to our prayer life. When we pray to God, we need to know that He hears us. That brings to us, it should bring us, a sense of confidence, not arrogance. Don't confuse those two words. A sense of confidence. I know my father hears me. Why? Because he loves me and I'm in a good biblical relationship with him. Therefore, he hears me. Now, don't confuse that with saying he's not going to, he's going to answer all of your requests. Some things you pray, the answer comes back, not right now. Some things you pray and you don't get them because maybe you couldn't handle that blessing right now. That's another thing we'll talk about later. Number one, our prayer life needs to be based on confidence so that we know. And then if that confidence exists, we know that he hears us. And then as a final result, if he hears us, then whatever we ask of him, God already knows, and God will bless us, and God will take care of us at his appointed time. I, I, I get a little frustrated, and I'm done. I get a little frustrated with people, especially Christians, um, who should know better, who pray and don't even know if God even hears them or answers their prayer. Listen, we pray to the God that has the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. You mean to tell me our little family <laughs> issues that we're dealing with, God can't take care of? No ma'am and no sir. John says this is a confidence that we have in him. Not arrogance. This is a confidence that if we ask anything according to his will, you don't need to guess it, he hears us. Next month, month of November, we're talking about the ultimate Christ. Remember I told you in, in October, we're talking about God the Father. 
In November, we'll talk about God the Son. And then in December, we'll wrap the year up talking about God the Holy Spirit. Next month, let's talk about the ultimate Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Do you remember what Paul said? When I came to you, I didn't come with excellency of speech or, or with man's wisdom, but I came to make you know, to proclaim to you the whole counsel of God. Let's talk about the ultimate Christ next month after we now have experienced the love of the Father. But you know, there are times when our sin separates us from our relationship with God. We don't mean it. We're human. We make mistakes. And there are times when our sin, as Isaiah said, our sin has separated between us and God and has hid his face from us. We don't need to stay in that sin-ridden, lost condition. God has built into his fellowship a chance that we can repent. What does that mean? It's almost like a spiritual do-over. We can repent, tell God that we're sorry, confess our faults one to another, and be restored to walk in newness of life. If you've got a prayer need or any kind of need that you have, that you're facing things in your life right now, prayer does not need to be your final resort. It's okay to ask God from the beginning for wisdom and for guidance. But if, in fact, you've sinned, the remedy for that is simple. Brothers and sisters, I've sinned. We don't need all the sordid details. Don't need to need to know. Them. But we just need you to say, I have sinned. I need y'all to pray for me. We will pray for you, and God will restore you to his fellowship. Biblically, James says, confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you might be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Or, if in fact you have not completed your, your walk with God, you're on a faith journey with God, you have biblical questions. You've got questions from the Bible that you've never gotten answered. I volunteer myself or any of us that we'll try to sit down with you and answer those questions from the Bible. Not with our own ideas, thoughts, and opinions, but you'll read it for yourself in Scripture. If you have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, everyone that comes to God does it the same way biblically. They hear the gospel, believe it, repent of their sins, confess Christ, being willing to be baptized in water for the remission of your sins, and God then adds you to this congregational family. If you have uh, a need that we can meet, we invite you to come now as we stand and sing the song of invitation.